Now in this lesson, we're going to carry on with our study of macromolecules, or more specifically, polymers. As mentioned, there are two kinds of polymers, addition polymers and condensation polymers. Uh, we, in the last lesson, we have looked at addition polymers, how they are formed um, when multiple alkenes come together and undergo addition polymerization. Okay? There are certain features of addition uh, polymerization is that there's only usually one type of monomer. All right? So your ethene will come together to form polyethene or your propenes uh, will come together to form polypropene. There's only one type of monomer. Okay, And the unique feature that your monomer must have is that it must have a carbon-carbon double bond. So it's, it is unsaturated. Now for condensation polymers, there are certain unique features um, for its formation as well. Okay, Condensation polymerization, it involves two different types of monomers. Okay, And then the monomer has a functional group at both ends of the monomer. All right, I know it sounds very abstract right now. In a while, we're going to see what it means. All right, so you will have two monomers, monomer A and monomer B. And then both monomers, monomer A, will contain a functional group at both ends of the monomer. And mono, monomer B will also contain a functional group at both ends of the monomer. There are essentially two kinds of condensation polymers. We're going to learn two kinds, polyamides and polyesters. All right. You are required to know an example for each. So in the syllabus, you are, you are supposed to know that nylon is an example of a polyamide. All right. So when we say nylon, you are expected to know that it's a polyamide. When we say terylene, you are expected to know that it's an example of a polyesters. Now we're going to look at how polyamides are formed first and then later on we're going to look at how polyesters are being formed. Now for polyamide, bear in mind that it is a condensation polymer. So uh, as mentioned, there are you need two different monomers, monomer A and monomer B. And each monomer will have a functional group um, at each end of the monomer. So the first type of monomer to form a polyamide, it contains a carboxylic acid group at both ends. Okay, so what does the square in the middle mean? It means that there are some that there are some other atoms in between, but we are not too concerned with what they are right now. Okay, so it it simply means this is just a symbol. It is it is nothing related to chemistry. It just tells you that there are some atoms in the middle, but we are not interested in them at the moment. Okay, so the first type of monomer to form a polyamide has your carboxylic acid functional group at both ends. So what do we call it? We call it a dicarboxylic acid. Okay. The second type of monomer, um, so again, I'm going to use this as a symbol to show that there are some atoms in between, but we are not overly concerned with them right now, is this NH2. Now NH2 is a special feature, All right, it looks special, um, but we have not learned it before. So this special feature is actu actually another functional group. Okay, this functional group is called your amine functional group. We are not going to learn amines in detail, um, but just have to know for now that when you see NH2, it simply means that it is an amine. Right, it's an amine functional group. Another thing about amine is that um, esters are sweet smelling. Amines, uh, they actually smell fishy. All right, they have a very pungent fishy smell. All right, so when one chemist, um, uh, when two chemists come together and they detect something is not going right, they will say that I smell amine. Okay, because I smell something fishy. 
Alright, so how do we name this type of polymer? Uh, sorry, this type of monomer, we call it a diamine. Di meaning um, there are two of them. Okay, so the monomers, the two types of monomers required to form a polyamide is a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. So in the next slide, we're going to see what happens when dicarboxylic acids meet diamines. So when dicarboxylic acids meet diamines, this is what is going to happen. Um, this is similar to esterification. Right? If you can recall in esterification, what happens is that the carboxylic acid um, will lose the OH group. And now when it meets a di uh, an amine, the amine will lose the hydrogen. Now H and OH, when they combine, when um, when they are lost and they combine together, what can they form? Again, they form water. Okay. So similarly, on the other side of your amine, your diamine is going to lose the hydrogen. Your acid is going to lose the OH group. And then you're going to remove another water. And then the process repeats itself. Right, so when the functional group of your carboxylic acid and the functional group of your amine they line up, what is going to happen is that your acid will lose the OH, your amine will lose the H, and the fragment will come off as a water molecule. It will repeat itself. And what happens after the H and OH is removed? How do we get the structure, the, the resulting structure? Is by joining the um, remaining fragments together with a single bond all right so this is how it, it is done so once your h and oh is being removed as water they are no longer there okay and then how do we get the structure of the product we have to join the remaining atoms together okay so essentially this is what you will get so you'll get something that looks like this after joining the remaining fragments together okay so if you look at the structure of the polymer form I hope you can see that there is a special feature in there All right you see a CONH um, group of atoms now, whenever you see a feature all right, or a specific combination of atoms, it means that it represents a functional group. So what functional group is this? This is the last one that we will learn. So we learned amine functional group just a while ago. So this is what we call an amide functional group. So amide functional group has the following group of atoms, C, O, and H. Okay, so if you take a look, in this polymer, there are many amide functional groups. That is why we call this type of polymer a polyamide. Okay, and the other thing is this. If you notice that um, what, what is linking your monomers together, it is essentially your amide functional groups. Alright, so these amide functional groups, we also call them amide linkages. Okay, amide linkages. Because they are linking your mon monomers together to form your polyamide. Now the last important thing to take note in this reaction is that um, when the polyamide is being formed, actually um, there is a side product. The side product will be your water molecules all right in chemistry whenever a reaction involves the removal of a small molecule for example water all right we call it a condensation reaction okay it's not um it's not related to whatever that you have learned so far condensation um in kinetic particle theory means uh, converting from a vapor to a liquid now condensation here carries a totally different meaning it means a reaction uh, in which 
a small molecule is lost okay so if you take a look at this reaction again the formation of your polyamide uh, involves the removal involves the loss of a small molecule of water or many small molecules of water so that is why we call it a condensation reaction and since it's a polymerization reaction we call it a condensation polymerization reaction So let's practice. In this question, we are given a diamine and a dicarboxylic acid. Now, don't be intimidated by this um, weird looking um, structure over here. Uh, again, it doesn't represent the square or the oval shape that I was using just now. Uh, what this is, is a benzene ring. Okay, benzene is another homologous series that you will learn at a higher level. For now, uh, you don't have to know what it is, but in drawing the polymer, you just replicate whatever shape, whatever unique shape that's given in the question to you in the polymer. So once again, how do we get the structure of the polymer is that we draw out the monomers. Okay, we draw out the monomers and then we make the functional groups uh, face each other. Okay, so this is my dicarboxylic acid. To the right of my dicarboxylic acid, there is another amine, which I'm not going to draw in complete, uh, the, to completion. And then on the left of my diamine, there is another carboxylic acid, which again, I'm not going to draw to completion. Okay, so what happens when diamine meets dicarboxylic acid the OH from your acid will be removed together with a H from your diamine same thing for um, all other acids and amine groups that are facing each other okay so all this um, H and OH will combine to form water molecules. Now, how do we get the structure of the polymer? We need to first remove the H and OH fragments. And then we link the remaining fragments together with a single bond. Okay, so the structure of your polymer will look something like this. I will first need to draw a repeat unit a repeat unit of my polymer will look something like this okay this is a repeat unit of my polymer uh, uh, polymer and then um, to draw the structure of the polymer i simply need to add a square bracket and put an n to represent that this unit is being duplicated n times to form the polymer okay so um, the unique thing about the repeat unit for condensation polymer is that it contains one unit of each monomer All right so draw one unit of your diamine and draw one unit of your dicarboxylic acid combine them together um, to get the repeat unit and in the repeat unit you can actually see the very clearly the amide linkage okay there's another amide linkage to the right that is not shown fully and there's another amide linkage to the left that is not shown fully but should you replicate that unit and you connect it to the left and the right you will see the amide linkages now in the next type of uh, question we will look at the structure of a uh, polyamide it's already given to you this is a uh, only a repeating unit and you're supposed to draw the structure of the monomer that forms this polymer all right in this question the structure given has a special kind of condensed uh, formula that we don't really learn in O levels when you have something like this ch2 
CH2, CH2 um, and there are six of them we can actually collapse the formula further into CH2 bracket 6 so when you see CH2 bracket 6 what does it mean? it means that there are six times of CH2 that's in between the two amine groups or the two amide groups and what it shows over here CH2 bracket 8 is between the two um, amide groups on your dicarboxylic acid there are eight CH2 groups that means CH2, 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 CH2 eight times now given the structure of your repeating unit or your um, polymer how do we get back the monomer this is related to um, the part when we were looking at esters given an ester how do we get back the carboxylic acid and the alcohol the trick is to look at the bond that was formed when your polymer is formed okay so the bond that is formed when your polymer is formed is essentially your CN single bond okay so bear in mind the bond that was formed um, when your polymer is formed is your CN single bond so in order to get back your monomers you need to break the CN single bond you need to add back the H to your amine you need to add back your OH to your C double bond O all right so let's see how it is done as mentioned you are supposed to locate the CN single bond so I'm going to do it here this is your CN single bond CN single bond and CN single bond okay the next thing is to break this bond so erase this bond now what you will get will be some funny looking fragments okay so you will have a fragment looking like this CH2 6 and you will have a funny looking fragment um, that looks like this okay so how do we get back the monomers you need to add back the H to your amine and you need to add back your OH to your carboxylic acids okay so what you see here they are the two monomers that forms um, the polymer that was given in the question right if you want to check again um, the polymer that we were looking at just now is a polyamide how do I know that it's a polyamide because there is an amide group over here so the monomers must be a diamine so indeed I have a diamine uh, and the other monomer is a dicarboxylic acid so indeed I do have a dicarboxylic acid now we have looked at how polyamides are formed the last thing to do is to look at how polyesters are formed All right, and to bear in mind that firstly an example of a polyester is terylene and same thing polyester is a type of a condensation polymer so we need two types of monomers A, polymer A and polymer B the thing about polyesters is that the first type of monomer again contains your carboxylic acid functional group um, at both ends of the monomer so again one of the monomers of your polyesters is dicarboxylic acid and then from the name of it is a polyester so how do we get an ester we react an acid with a alcohol so the other type of polymer that's required to form a polyester um, they will have uh, an alcohol functional group at both ends of the poly of the monomer right what do we call th them we call them a diol okay so this serves as a warning also uh, since this is the last chapter of the syllabus you should be doing very intensive revision at this point in time all right so what if you don't study very hard at this point in time uh, then diol all right you are diol now now so what happens when a dicarboxylic acid meets a diol this is what will happen 
uh, it will the OH group from your acid will be lost together with the H from your alcohol and this will be the same for all the functional groups okay and this H and OH will come off as water molecules again so this is essentially a condensation reaction or condensation polymerization and then what is the structure of your product your product will look something like this okay once again the square and the um, overs they simply represent symbols not chemical symbols but random symbols um, to tell you that there's something in between but I'm not too concerned with what is in between the functional groups Alright, so this is how your um, polymer is going to look like. So what do you see in the structure of your polymer? You will see again some unique group of atoms. You shouldn't be unfamiliar to this group of atoms. This is your ester functional group. Okay since in the polymer if you look at the structure of the polymer there are many uh, ester functional groups we call this kind of polymer a polyester okay again what is linking your monomers together it is your ester functional group so these ester functional groups we call them ester linkages they are linking your monomers together and since the formation of this polymer requires the removal of many small uh, molecules of water, we call this a condensation polymerization. Okay, let's practice once again. We have um, a dicarboxylic acid here and a diol. All right, once again, you see the benzene group. Don't worry too much about it. When drawing the structure of the polymer, simply treat it like a shape and draw in the shape as you see it so how do we draw the structure of the polymer now um, you should be getting increasingly familiar so I'm going to uh, do it slightly faster for your dicarboxylic acid I'm going to remove my OH group okay I'm going to remove my OH group for my diol I'm going to remove my H okay and then i'm going to link the remaining fragments up using a single bond so that will give me the following repeat unit okay so this is the repeat unit for the polyester that is formed and then the structure of the uh, polymer um, we can just use a bracket and N to represent it now in this next question we are given the structure of a polyester and we are supposed to find um, draw out the monomers that give this polyester now this question is not too different from uh, again um, how do we get the products of the hydrolysis of an ester or to find out the acid and the alcohol that gave an ester all right again if you can recall the key is to locate your ester functional group and then you have to find the co single bond okay find the co single bond which is actually here okay and next we need to break the co single bonds so to get the um, structure of your alcohol and your acid again we need to break the CO single bonds okay and on breaking the CO single bonds we'll end up with some again weird looking structures
and we can get back our acid and alcohol by adding a H to the O and adding a OH to the C double bond O. Okay, since we are looking at a polyester, the monomer that we are starting with should be a dicarboxylic acid. So yes, we have a dicarboxylic acid and the other monomer must be a diol. So yes, we do have a diol. So these are the two monomers that gives rise to um, the polyester shown in the question. Now some um, examples of condensation polymers or some examples of the uses of nylon and polyester, they are very often found in the fabric of the um, clothing that we wear. Right, nylon has some specific characteristics, polyesters have other set of character characteristics. They are both a uh, useful material for making fabric. Now, um, just an overview to recap the, this chapter, we have looked at two types of polymerization, addition and condensation. In addition, polymerization, um, it is actually a process where many monomers come together, they join together without the loss of any molecules or atoms. All right, so they simply join together, there's nothing that's lost. Um, there's only one type of monomer usually, and the monomer contains a carbon-carbon double bond. As for condensation polymers, condensation polymers, as the term condensation suggests that um, is a loss of a small molecule or many small molecules in the process of the polymerization. Condensation polymerization requires two different types of monomers and each monomer will contain a functional group at both ends. There are two types of condensation polymers. We have polyamide, okay, which is um, also known as nylon, and uh, Monomers that are required, they are a dicarboxylic acid. So you have a carboxylic acid functional group at both ends and a diamine. So you have an amine group at both ends. So when many dicarboxylic acids and many diamines come together, they form multiple amides uh, that links the monomers together. Uh, we call that polymer polyamide. For polyesters, um, it's, um, it's also known as terylene. We require a dicarboxylic acid and the other monomer um, that's required is a diol. So when many dicarboxylic acids and many diols come together, um, they undergo condensation reactions and they form a long chain molecule that's linked together by ester um, functional groups. So we call it a polyester.